This video is sponsored by Comic Bento, the original comic book subscription box. If you had a way to predict the future, would you try to keep bad things from happening or resist the temptation and just let the future happen? In Marvel's Civil War II, lines are once again drawn between the superhero community when an inhuman named Ulysses comes on the scene with the power to see and experience future threats before they happen. Basically, Minority Report. With this ability, Marvel's superheroes were able to save the world from a celestial threat, stop an attack by Thanos, and keep the streets free of crime before they're even committed. And this is the issue on the table. Iron Man believes that punishing someone before they commit a crime is outright wrong, whereas Captain Marvel believes that if they have the ability to stop tragedies before they happen, then they should. Think of it like that scene from Captain America Winter Soldier. You know, this one. That's the punishment usually came after the crime. We can't afford to wait that long. It's a complicated ethical topic that feels a bit pertinent in today's culture, so let's dive right into more detail about each side, starting with Captain Marvel. When you're a superhero, it can seem like you're facing constant battles against enormous threats. You win one fight and you don't get time to celebrate before another one comes along. Captain Marvel's goal is simple. She wants to use Ulysses' precognition powers to keep the world safe, to stop tragedies before they happen. As a superhero, you often have to wait until after people get hurt before you can get involved. It's reactive. You don't know that a villain is going to launch an attack on a specific place at a specific time, injuring or killing a specific number of civilians until it happens. Your job then is to minimize destruction and casualties as much as you possibly can, but you're starting from an already losing side. The fact that you were called into battle means that more than likely someone already got hurt. And to Captain Marvel, if everyone's alive at the end of the day, then using Ulysses' powers is the right thing to do. Carol also appears to want to change the role of the superhero. We tend to think of them, and certainly witness them, as super-powered individuals who are called into battle to fight violence with more violence, punching and shooting and smashing their way to victory. But Captain Marvel believes that this is an opportunity for heroes to fight crime without violence, intercept threats before things get physical. And she doesn't just want to save civilians. Carol also believes that this could save police officers, firefighters, and heroes who put themselves in these dangerous situations. Of course, that argument isn't looking so solid after the apparent deaths of War Machine Bruce Banner and the mortal wounding of She-Hulk, which all happened because Captain Marvel wanted to change the future that Ulysses saw, so... Yeah... Punishing someone before they commit a crime is known as pre-punishment or pre-crime and has been a subject of debate between philosophers. One philosopher who was pro-pre-punishment is Christopher New, who wrote some pieces on the subject with great names like time and punishment, as well as punishing times. To hit some of the broad strokes of his argument, New proposes that it is morally acceptable to punish people both before and after they commit a crime, provided we know, or at least believe beyond a reasonable doubt, that they will definitely commit the crime. However, what usually stops us from pre-punishing people is that we typically lack proper knowledge to future crimes. Let's grab an example real fast. Let's say Scott Lang burgles a house, but he gets caught in the process. In a court of law, you'd have to prove that Scott really did commit that crime. You'd present evidence, testimonies, etc. New argues that if our judgments of the past are justifiable, even though memories are faulty and evidence can sometimes be unreliable, then why can't we say the same thing for the future? Essentially, he's saying that if all we need is proof beyond a reasonable doubt that someone did commit a crime, couldn't we also present proof beyond a reasonable doubt that someone will commit a crime? Ulysses' precognitions could be all the evidence you need. New also asks us to think about pre-punishment by looking instead at pre-reward. He uses the example of soldiers going on suicide missions. Imagine the government pre-rewarding them with military honors, knowing they wouldn't make it back from their mission alive. Is there anything inherently wrong with that? Probably not. So if there's nothing intrinsically wrong with pre-rewarding someone, then New thinks there shouldn't be anything wrong with pre-punishing someone. New's arguments focus on moral balance. Crime and punishment must go hand in hand, but 
it doesn't really matter which order. If you go out to eat, some restaurants might make you pay before you get your food, some after. It's not vital which comes first. At some point you get food, and at some point the restaurant gets money. New argues that as long as a moral balance is met, then you could either punish someone before or after a crime, it makes no difference. Though this does imply that if you punish someone before they commit a crime, you eventually have to let them actually commit a crime to achieve that moral balance, which honestly kind of feels like it defeats the purpose. On the other hand, we have Iron Man, who is completely against the idea of using Ulysses to stop crimes before they happen. For starters, Tony is a futurist. He respects the future and believes that it should happen without anyone interfering with it, basically pleading to let the future happen the way it's meant to happen. Not only that, but we don't really know how Ulysses' visions work. At least, we don't currently. Issue 3 left us with a crazy cliffhanger that'll be revealed hopefully in the next issue. But what has been said about it so far is that it seems to be based on mathematical probabilities. Quote, he can determine within a fraction of a percent the probability that certain events are going to take place. End quote. You may recall the idea of using an algorithm to determine whether or not someone will commit a crime from our Moon Knight video, which we did a while back. To Iron Man, this is completely wrong. We shouldn't punish people before they commit a crime. And philosopher Saul Smolansky would agree. He fought against news arguments for pre-punishment. Let's pick on Scott Lang a little more. Say that instead of Ulysses having a vision of Ant-Man burgling a house, Ant-Man simply calls the police up ahead of time and is like, hey man, I'm gonna go burgle this house. Smolansky says that since he hasn't actually done the crime yet, Scott still has the opportunity to change his mind, so he shouldn't be preemptively punished. Pre-punishment doesn't respect a person's agency or capacity to make a different decision at the last moment. Smolansky doesn't see the timeline as fixed, but rather a series of branching off points where different decisions can be made. This is exactly how Iron Man views the future as well. As Tony points out, Ulysses isn't actually predicting the future, he's predicting a future. Think about it. If he sees the end of the world, tells the Avengers about it, and they stop it before it can happen, did he really predict the future? He merely predicted an outcome that could have happened, but didn't. His vision did not come true, and if he simply sees possible futures, then who's to say there's not another possible future where nothing happened at all? Back to our Ant-Man example. Ulysses has a vision of him burgling a house, so the police are called in to stop him before that happens. If that vision was of a possible reality, perhaps there was another reality where Scott didn't go through with it. And maybe that was this reality, but we'll never know because he was apprehended before he actually did anything. New does have an interesting counter-argument for this, though. If we need to respect a person's agency, and we know that they have the intention to commit a crime, then wouldn't the most respectful thing be to assume that they will indeed follow through with it and not change their mind? And this is where we could get into the dangerous waters of entrapment. We can absolutely punish someone for planning or conspiring to commit a crime that they have not yet committed, but sometimes that can involve law enforcement going undercover to try and coax someone to commit a crime they might not have otherwise gone through with, just so they can make an arrest. Civil War II even opens with She-Hulk defending a client who was entrapped by the police. He never actually committed a crime, never planned anything. He merely talked about it. And the people he talked about it with were undercover officers who were likely trying to induce any kind of declarative statement that would be cause for arrest. In their eyes, and even in the eyes of Maria Hill, villains can never truly be reformed. They'll hurt more people and end up in prison again anyway, so why not just skip to them going back to prison without having them hurt anyone first? Which, okay, that argument is pretty rich to me, considering all the reformed villains who have become Avengers. Hawkeye, for example, was a criminal turned superhero who has helped save the world time and time again, and he never went back to his old ways of hurting people and going to jail. Oh. Let's actually talk more about that, because this moment frames the somewhat abstract debate into a more tangible event in the Marvel Universe. To set it up, Bruce Banner tells Hawkeye to kill him if he ever seems like he's gonna Hulk out again. He even gives Hawkeye the proper tools to do so. The problem is that you can't kill Hulk, only puny Banner. So Hawkeye has to make the call. If he sees Bruce about to turn into Hulk, he has to preemptively kill him before the transformation starts. If he's too late, Hulk could go on a rampage, taking who knows how many innocent lives. And this is exactly what Hawkeye does. He kills Bruce before the Hulk comes out. But how did he know for sure he was about to transform? 
Well, he simply used his best judgment. Was it the right call? We'll never really know for sure. Bruce was killed before he did anything wrong. At Hawkeye's trial, everyone remains logically consistent. Iron Man defends that Bruce hadn't done anything wrong yet and that Hawkeye couldn't have possibly known with 100% certainty that the Hulk was about to go on a rampage. Meanwhile, Captain Marvel argues that Hawkeye made the right call, not only because it was Bruce himself who called for this action to be taken, but also because it potentially saved many lives. So. Who was right? Captain Marvel, who wants to intercept threats before they have a chance to hurt anyone, saving the world before tragedies happen, or Iron Man, who wants to respect people's capacity to choose their own destiny and punish people only after they've committed a crime? Personally, I don't really know, but I want to know what you guys think. Let's talk about it in the comments below. One sec, I'm getting a premonition. I sense a future where you get comic book trades and graphic novels delivered directly to your door every month via Comic Bento. Here's the deal, guys. I love comics. You know this, but I love reading in trades more than single issues. Plus, it can be hard to find new comics that I should be reading. Thankfully, Comic Bento solves both of those problems for me. Each Comic Bento box contains at least $60 worth of surprise graphic novels from both the big boys like Marvel and DC to the unsung indie heroes. And each month centers around a new theme. July's theme is They Robots, which will bring you tales from robotic heroism, terror, and more involving robots, androids, and mechanical beings. And for $60 worth of comics, their plans only start as low as $17.50 a month, plus shipping and handling, but I can sweeten the deal a little for you guys right here, for you wonderful nerds. If you use the promo code NerdSync at checkout, you can save an additional 15% on any Comic Bento subscription. If you want this month's box, you got until July 15th to sign up at ComicBento.com. That's it for this video. Make sure to check out that Moon Knight video I talked about earlier about using algorithms to predict future crimes. It's one of my favorites. I also talked in depth about Civil War II and pre-punishment on Elseworlds Exchange a while back with the lovely Sal and Joel. So go ahead over there to see the whole conversation. Lots of good stuff for your ear holes. And make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new videos we make for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that explore the history, science, art, and philosophy behind your favorite comic book superheroes. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.